the testaments of the 12 patriarchs. The testament of Joseph, the 11th son of Jacob and Rachel. The copy of the testament of Joseph he was about to die he called his sons and his brethren together and said to them my brethren my children hearken to Yosef the beloved of Yahuda give ear my sons unto your father I have seen evil in my life I have seen envy and I have seen death. Yet I did not go astray, but I preserved in the truth of Yahuwah. My brethren hated me, but the Supreme loved me. They wished to slay me, but the power of my fathers guarded me. They let me down into a pit. And the Most High brought me up again. I was sold into slavery. The supreme of all made me free. I was taken into captivity. And the supreme strong hand assisted me. I was alone and my power comforted me. I was sick Supreme visited me. I was in prison. And my power showed favor unto me. In bonds. And he released me. I was slandered and the Supreme pleaded my cause 
bitterly spoken against by the Egyptians. And Yahuwah delivered me. I was envied by my fellow slaves and my power exalted me. This chief captain of Pharaoh entrusted me to his house and I struggled against a shameless woman urging me to transgress with her. The power of Yahuda, my father, delivered me from the burning flame. I was cast into prison. I was beaten. I was mocked. But the mighty one granted me to find mercy in the sight of the keeper of the prison. For the Supreme does not forsake them that reverence him. in darkness he does not forsake them that reverence him that are in bonds nor in tribulations nor those that are in necessities Side power is not put to shame as a man, nor as the son of man is he afraid. As one that is earthborn, is he weak? to give protection and in diverse ways he does comfort though for a little space he departs to try the inclination of the soul Temptations, the Supreme showed me approved, and in all of them, 
I endured. For endurance is a mighty charm. And patience gives many good things. How often did the Egyptian woman threaten me with death? How often did she give me over to punishment and then call me back and threaten me? And when I was unwilling to be in her company, she said to me, you shall be the Lord of me and all that is in my house. If you will give yourself unto me, and you shall be as our master. But I remember the words of my father going into my chamber I wept and prayed unto the supreme and I fasted in those seven years and I appeared to the Egyptians as one living delicately for they that fast for the most high's sake receive beauty of face and if my lord were away from home I drink no wine, nor for three days did I take my food, but I gave it to the poor and the sick. And I sought the supreme early. wept for the Egyptian woman of Memphis for very unceasingly did she trouble me for also at night she came to me under pretense of visiting me Because she had no male child, she pretended to regard me as a son. And so I prayed to the Supreme, and she bare a male child. And for a time, she embraced me as a son, and I knew it not. But later, she sought to draw me into fornication. And when I perceived it, I sorrowed unto death. And when she had gone out, I came to myself. And I lamented for her many days because I recognized her guile and her deceit. And I declared. 
declared unto her the words of the Most High. If happily she would turn from her evil lust. Often, therefore, did she flatter me with words as a holy man. And guile fully in her talk, she praised my chastity before her husband. All the while, desiring to ensnare me when we were alone. For she loaded me openly at chast, and in secret she said unto me, Fear not my husband, for he is persuaded concerning your chastity. For even should one tell him concerning you and I, he would not believe it. Owing to all these things, I lay upon the ground and I besought the Supreme that he would deliver me from her deceit. And when she prevailed, nothing thereby, she came again. She came again to me under the plea of instruction that she might learn the word of the Most High. And she said unto me, If you will that I should leave my idols, lie with me, and I will persuade my husband to depart from his idols. And we will walk in the law of the Supreme. And I said unto her, The mighty one does not will that those that reverence him should be in uncleanness, nor does he take pleasure in them that commit adultery. But he takes pleasure in those that approach him with a pure heart and undefiled lips. But she held her peace, longing to accomplish her evil desire. And I gave myself yet more to fasting and prayer that the Supreme might deliver me from her. And again, at another time, she said unto me, If you will not commit adultery with me, I will kill my husband by poison. And I will take you to be my husband. I 
I therefore, when I heard this, rent my garments and said unto her, Woman, reverence the Most High and do not do this evil deed lest you be destroyed. For know indeed that I will declare this thy device unto all men. She therefore being afraid be sure that I will not declare this device. And she departed from me, soothing me with gifts and sending to me every delight of the sons of men. Afterwards, she sent me food mangled with enchantments. And when the eunuch who brought the food to me came, I looked up and beheld a terrible man giving me the dish of a sword. And I perceived that her scheme was to beguile me. And when he had gone out, I wept. Nor did I taste any of her food. So then after one day she came to me and observe the food and said unto me why is it that you have not eaten the food and I said unto her it is because you have filled it with deadly enchantments What do you say? I come not near idols, but the Lord alone. Now, therefore, know that the supreme, the power of my father has revealed unto me by his angel, your wickedness. And I have kept it to convict you. If happily you may see it and repent. But that you may learn that the wickedness of the ungodly has no power over them that worship the supreme with chastity? Behold, I will take of the food and I will eat it before you. And having said so, I pray thus the power of my fathers and the angel of Abraham be with me and I ate and when she saw this 
she fell upon her face at my feet weeping. And I raised her up and admonished her. And she promised to do this iniquity no more. heart was still set upon evil and she looked around her to ensnare me and sighing deeply she became downcast though she was not sick and when her husband saw her he said unto her why is your countenance fallen She said unto him, I have a pain in my heart, and the groanings of my spirit oppress me. And so he comforted her who was not sick. Then accordingly, Seizing an opportunity, she rushed unto me while her husband was not there. And she said unto me, I will hang myself or I will cast myself over a cliff if you will not lie with me. I saw the spirit of Belial was troubling her. I prayed unto the mighty one and said unto her, Why, wretched woman, why are you troubled and disturbed? Why are you blinded through sins? Remember, if you kill yourself, ask Tiho, the concubine of your husband, your rival, will beat your children, and you will destroy your memorial from of the earth. said unto me lo then you love me let this suffice me only strive for my life and my children and I expect that I shall enjoy my desire also She knew not that because of my power I speak thus and not because of her. For if a man has fallen before the passion of a wicked desire and become enslaved by it, even as she Whatever good thing he may hear with regard to that passion, he receives it with a view of his wicked desire. I declare therefore unto you, my children, that it was about the sixth hour when she departed from me. 
and I knelt before the supreme all the day and all the night and about dawn I rose up weeping the entire time and praying for a release from her at last then she laid hold of my garments forcibly dragging me to have connection with her left it behind and fled away naked. And holding fast to the garment, she falsely accused me. And when her husband came, he cast me into prison in his house. And on the next day, he scourged me sent me into Fowl's prison. And when I was in bonds, the Egyptian woman was oppressed with grief. And she came and heard how I gave thanks unto the Supreme and sang praises in the abode of darkness with glad voice I rejoiced glorifying my power that I was delivered from the lustful desire of the Egyptian woman and often She sent unto me, saying, Consent, Joseph, to fulfill my desire, and I will release you from thy bonds, and I will free you from the darkness. And not even in thought did I incline unto her, For the Supreme loves him who in a den of darkness combines fasting with chastity rather than the men who in king's chambers combines luxury with license. And if a man leaves in chastity and desires also glory <clears throat> and the Most High knows that it is expedient for him he bestows this also upon him even as upon me How often, though she were sick, did she come down to me at unlooked for hours and listened to my voice as I prayed? And when I heard her groanings, I held my peace. For when I was in her house, She wanted to bear her arms and her breasts and her legs that I might lie with her. For 
she was very beautiful. Splendidly adorned in order to beguile me. And the Lord guarded me from her devices. You see, therefore, my children, how great things patience works. How great things prayer with fasting works. So you also if you follow after chastity, follow after purity with patience and prayer with fasting in humility of heart, the Supreme will dwell among you. Because he loves chastity. And wheresoever the Most High dwells, even though envy or slavery, even though slender befalls a man, the Supreme who dwells in him for the sake of his chastity not only delivers him from evil, but also exalts him even as me. For in every way the man is lifted up, whether in deed or in word or in thought, My brothers know how my father loved me, and yet I did not exalt myself in my mind. Although I was a child, I had the reverence of the Supreme in my heart, for I knew that all things would pass away. And I did not raise myself against them with evil intent. But I honored my brethren. And out of respect for them, even when I was being sold, I refrain from telling the Ishmaelites that I was the son of Jacob, a great and mighty man. Also, therefore, my children, have the reverence of the Supreme in all your works before your eyes and honor your brethren. For everyone who does the law of the Supreme shall be loved by him. When I came to the endocolpite with the Ishmaelites, 
they asked me saying are you a slave and I said that I was a homeborn slave that I might not put my brethren to shame and the eldest of them said to me You are not a slave for even your appearance does make it manifest but I said that I was their slave and when we came into Egypt they strove concerning me which of them should buy me and take me Therefore it seemed good to all that I should remain in Egypt with the merchant of their trade until they should return bringing merchandise. And the Supreme gave me favor in the eyes of the merchant and the merchant entrusted unto me his house. supreme blessed them by my means and increased them in gold and silver and in household servants and I was with him three months and five days and about that time the Memphian woman the wife of Pentefree came down in a chariot with great pomp because she had heard from her eunuchs concerning me and she told her husband that the merchant had become rich by means of a young Hebrew and they say that he had assuredly been stolen out of the land of Canaan. Now therefore render justice unto him and take away the youth to thy house. So shall the power of the Hebrews bless you for grace from heaven is upon him. Pentefris was persuaded by her words and commanded the merchant to be brought and said unto him what is this that I hear concerning you that you steal people out of the land of Canaan and sell them for slaves But the merchant fell at his feet and besought him, saying, I beseech you, my Lord. I know not what you're saying. And Pentefree said unto him, Where then is the Hebrew slave? And he said, The Ishmaelites entrusted him to me until they should return but he believed them not but commanded him to be stripped and beaten and when he persisted in this statement Pentefree said let the youth be brought When I was brought in, I did obeisance to Pentefris, for he was third in rank of the officers of Pharaoh. And he 
took me apart from him and said unto me, Are you a slave or are you free? I said I was a slave. And he said, Whose slave are you? And I said, I belong to the Ishmaelites. And he said, How did you become their slave? And I said, They bought me out of the land of Canaan. And he said unto me, Oh, truly you're lying. And immediately he commanded me to be stripped and beaten. Now, the Memphian woman was looking through a window at me while I was being beaten, for her house was near. And she sent unto him, saying, Your judgment is unjust, for you do punish a free man who has been stolen as though he were a transgressor. And when I made no change in my statement, though I was beaten, he ordered me to be imprisoned until he said the owners of the boy should come. And the woman said unto her husband, Why do you detain the captive and well-born lad in bonds who ought rather to be set at liberty and be waited upon? For she wished to see me out of a desire of sin, but I was ignorant concerning all these things. And he said to her, It is not the custom of the Egyptians to take away that which belongs to others before proof is given. This therefore he said concerning the merchant, but as for the lad, he must be imprisoned. Now, after 24 days came the Ishmaelites, for they had heard that Jacob, my father, was mourning much concerning me. And they came and said unto me, How is it that you said that you were a slave? And lo, we have learned that you are the son of a mighty man in the land of Canaan. And your father still mourns for you in sackcloth and ashes. When I heard this, my bowels were dissolved and my heart melted and I desired greatly to weep, but I restrained myself that I should not put my brethren to shame. I said unto them, I know not that I'm a slave. Then, therefore, they took counsel to sell me, that I should not be found in their hands. For they feared my father, lest he should come and execute upon them a grievous vengeance. For they had heard that he was mighty with the Mosai power 
and with men. Then said the merchant unto them, Release me from the judgment of Pentafree. And they came and requested me, saying, Say that you was bought by us with money, and he will set you free. Now the Memphian woman said to her husband, Buy the youth. For I hear, said she, that they are selling him. she sent a eunuch to the Ishmaelites and asked them to sell me. The chief captain therefore called the Ishmaelites and asked them to sell me. And since he did not agree to their price, he departed. But the eunuch, when he had made trial of them, made known to his mistress that they asked a large price for their slave. And she sent another eunuch saying, even though they demand too many, give them. Do not spare the gold, only buy the boy and bring him to me. Therefore went and gave them eighty pieces of gold, and he received me. But to the Egyptian woman he said, I have given a hundred. And though I knew this, I held my peace, lest the eunuch should be put to shame. You see, therefore, my children, what great things I endured, that I should not put my brethren to shame. To you also, therefore, love one another. And with long suffering, hide one another's faults. For the supreme delights in the unity of brethren and in the purpose of a heart that takes pleasure in love. And when my brethren came into Egypt, they learned that I had returned their money unto them and upbraided them not and comforted them. And after the death of Jacob my father, I loved them more abundantly all things whatsoever Jacob my father commended I did very abundantly for my brethren and I did not allow them to be afflicted even in the smallest matter all that was in my hand I gave unto them and their children were my children and my children were as their servants
and their life was my life. And all their suffering was my suffering. And all their sickness was my infirmity. My land was their land and their counsel, my counsel. And I exalted not myself among them in arrogance because of my worldly glory. But I was among them as one of the least. If you also therefore walk in the commandments of the Supreme, my children, he will exalt you there and will bless you with good things forever and ever. And if anyone seeks to do evil unto you, do well unto him and pray for him and you shall be redeemed of the supreme from all evil For behold, you see that out of my humility and my long suffering, I took unto wife the daughter of the priests of Heliopolis. And a hundred talents of gold were given me with her. And the Supreme made them to serve me. The Supreme gave me also beauty as a flower beyond the beautiful ones of the Yahudims. The Supreme preserved me unto old age in strength and in beauty. Because I was like in all things to Jacob. Hear ye therefore the vision which I saw. I saw twelve hearts feeding and nine of them were dispersed. Now the other three were preserved, but on the following day, they were also dispersed. And I saw that the three hearts became three lamps and they cried to the Supreme and he brought them forth into a flourishing and well watered place. Yes, he brought them out of darkness into light. And there they cried unto the Supreme until they're gathered together to them the nine hearts and they became as twelve sheep 
And after a little time, they increased and became many flocks. And after these things, I saw and beheld 12 bulls were sucking one cow, which produced a sea of milk. And there drank thereof the 12 flocks and innumerable herds. And the horns of the fourth bull went up unto heaven and became as a wall for the flocks. And in the midst of the two horns there grew another horn. And I saw a bull calf which surrounded them twelve times. And it became a help to the entire bulls. And I saw in the midst of the horns a virgin wearing a many colored garment. And from her went forth a lamb. right was as it were a lion and all the beasts and all the reptiles rushed against him and the lamb overcame them and destroyed them and the bulls rejoiced Because of him the angels and men rejoiced in all the land. And these things shall come to pass in their season in the last days. Therefore, my children, observe the commandments of the Supreme. And honor Loya, and honor Yahawada, for from them shall arise unto you the Lamb of the Most High, who takes away the sin of the world, and who saves all the Gentiles and all the Yahudims. For his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, which shall not pass away. My kingdom among you shall come to an end as a watcher's hammock, which after the summer disappears. For I know that after my death, the Egyptians will afflict you, but the Supreme will avenge you. And will bring you into that which he promised to your fathers. But 
you shall carry up my bones with you. For when my bones are being taken up there, the Supreme shall be with you in light. And Belial shall be in darkness with the Egyptians. And also carry Zilpah your mother and near to Bila by the Hippodrome lay Zilpah near Rachel. Joseph has said these things. He stretched out his feet and died at a good old age. And all Yahuda mourned for him. All Egypt mourn Yosef with a great mourning. They took with them the bones of Yosef and they buried him in Hebron with his fathers. And the years of his life were 110 years. the one who is 
and the one who is to come. Yah Shalom family. Until next time.